Savior, Jesus Christ, as him being the true great high priest, he offered up his body upon the tree of the cross. And you know what he did with his soul? He offered up his soul as well. It was his soul. Listen to what it says in Isaiah. It says in Isaiah 53, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed and shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper, prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So even though he offered up his body, he also offered up his soul, beloved brothers and sisters. And that soul went down into Hades, into the wilderness, and he turned the crimson sin of our fathers, Adam, our mother Eve, Musi, Abraham, all of them, all that crimson sin, he turned it from red to white, clean, Jesus Christos. Because he was the only soul that went to hell that committed no sin. The sins that he had upon him was the sins of the people. And beloved brothers and sisters, even our sins. And this is the importance of the cross. This is why the cross is important. So it's not good enough that we carry a cross or we wear the cross in our clothing or even tattoo it. We have to understand the fundamental reason and what it means to truly carry the cross. It means in this life, we're going to have sufferings. But guess what? The only joy we find in this life is preaching the cross of Christ. Salvation. Caduce Paulo says that he glorifies in the cross of Christ. And he has to preach the crucified Christ. Are we doing that? Are we preaching Christ? And who are we preaching Christ to? It's very important. We cannot only share Christ among our tribes and among those who we're close to. We have to bring Christ to the world. Alem. Everyone. We have to tell them about the joy. Because if we don't do that, you know what's happening to the world today? Depression. Mental illness. People are losing their homes. If they don't have the hope of Christ, they have no hope, beloved brothers and sisters. And you're seeing it. Those people who were running down that big 5,000 square feet home and they paid $1.5 million for it. You know what ended up happening? They bid and they overbid. And now guess what? Their house is not worth that anymore. It's only worth 900,000. The bank is saying they only gonna give them 800,000. What happened to those people when they have no hope? Beloved brothers and sisters, they need to have hope greater than that house. They need to have hope great. The hope that is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Madani Alem, Xavier. So this cross that we celebrate, it's significant. And we shouldn't take it lightly. Don't just come to Deborah Salam as a social club. This is not a social club. It's not a social club where we can come and hang out with our friends. Come to Deborah Salam, to do Mikael, to learn of your faith, to learn of Maskel, to learn of the Mara, what it really means. It's very important in this time, because many of us, many of us who are saying that we're Orthodox, we really don't truly know what it is that we believe in, because we grew up in it, and we go through the motions, and the motions is not enough because there's a time that's coming that's going to test each and one, each of us, our faith. Each of our faith will be tested, beloved brothers and sisters, in this time. Because you know what's happening? Diabolos is about to be judged. He's going to be thrown into the lake of fire soon. And you know why? Because he rebelled against Ixabir Amlak. And because he rebelled, the lake of fire was prepared for him. But you know what he's doing? He's going to and fro all over the earth to see who he could bring with him. He wants to turn mother against daughter, father against son, neighbor against neighbor, employer against employee. That's what he's doing. He's creating confusion because his time is short. 
And he wants to bring as much people with him into the lake of fire. Beloved brothers and sisters, Moscow, that is the narrow path that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, he spoke about. The narrow path, walking the narrow path, carrying your cross. Sometimes we cry and we murmur and we complain, but it's the cross that gives us that ultimate hope. That in this life, there's no happiness except for Christ. There's no true happiness except for Christ in this life. Every other pleasure that we find in this life is fleeting. That means it's passing away. It's one minute, five minute, ten minute, maybe an hour, two hours if you're lucky. Maybe if you're good, one week. But eventually it's gone. The eternal happiness, we get it from Ixiabir Amla. Through his beloved son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus. So remember I told you about the kid. The two kids. One was sacrificed and sprinkled upon the altar. One was sent into the wilderness. Let me tell you something. When our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, was crucified on the tree of the cross, even the sun refused to shine. Even creation cried out. There was an earthquake. Do you know that when that happened, when he was crucified, from the time he was crucified, the following year, when the high priest went into the Holy of, of Holies in Jerusalem, and he did that exact same ritual. He took the kid, sacrificed it, sprinkled the blood on the altar, and the other one he sent with the crimson cloth into the wilderness. Do you know what happened? That crimson cloth did not turn white anymore. From the time of our Lord and Savior's crucifixion up until AD 70, when the Jerusalem temple was destroyed by the Romans, that crimson cloth no longer turned white. Because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, Liki Kahanat, the true high priest, that was it. That was the true sacrifice. The sacrifice that doesn't need to be repeated year after year after year, once and for all. He died for our sins. He died for us, each and every one of us. And if he died for our sins, we should be willing to offer this to our neighbors as well. Tell them about the good news of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Negist Eleni, she did a great thing. She found the maskel, and that maskel was a special maskel. It was a miraculous maskel. It rose people from the dead. You see, it forgives sins. This is a powerful thing, beloved brothers and sisters. And that's why for you, parents, it's important for you to teach your children. I know many of you come to me sometimes and you say that you want your children to learn about the faith. But let me tell you something, it's very difficult for your children to learn about the faith and they don't see it in you. It's like me telling my child to clean their room and they look at my room and it's dirty. And then you wonder, how come this little boy won't clean his room? Because the little boy is saying, but mommy doesn't clean her room. Huh? Beloved brothers and sisters, we cannot be hypocrites. We cannot tell the children to clean up and we don't clean up. They're looking. It isn't what we say, it's what we do. We cannot tell them to salat, to pray, and we don't pray. They don't see us praying. We cannot tell them to study their masafkadus, and they don't see us studying the masafkadus. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, beloved brothers and sisters. And this is what we need to understand. They're watching you. They're watching you. And this is the important thing that many parents, they forget. They bring the children to the church and say, okay, Sunday school. <laughs> they learn at Sunday school and then they go home and they see something totally different. Remember, they spend more time at home than they spend at Beta Christian. It's very important. So if you want your children to learn of the faith, you must learn of the faith as well. Not only of the faith with the rituals and the rites, but the faith that you walk in this faith called the Christian life. This is what you need to do. This because they learn from example. That's a, that's a basic principle of life. What they see. You see what they see. Not what, they, not what you say. What they see. And it's very important, beloved brothers and sisters, that we understand this. 
That's when we understand what they learn in the church, it must be reinforced in the home. If it's not reinforced in the home, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. And that's why Jesus Christus says that the servant is not greater than the master. If they persecuted the servant, the master, they're going to persecute the servant. If they hear the words of the master, they're going to hear the words of the servant. That's why in this time, anytime you find yourself stressed and depressed, you know what the best thing to do to relieve that depression is? I'm going to tell you a secret. Preach Jesus Christus. Tell somebody about Jesus Christus, your neighbor. Tell them what they did for you. And I tell you, you just lift up that weight. Anything, all your troubles will go away. Because it will remind you of the hope that you have, the hope that you stand in. You share it with someone. Share it with someone. Go out and talk to a stranger. You know that psychiatrists say that if you speak to strangers, you have less stress. You know why? Because when you speak to strangers, you realize that your problems isn't as bad as you think. Some people may have some problems that's terrible. Like one brother, he says, you know what? I don't have any shoes. I have no shoes, I'm walking barefoot. And then he's crying out to God, God, I have no shoes. And he walks down the street and he sees a man with no feet. Huh? It makes his problem of not having shoes look very small, tinnish. Huh? Beloved brothers and sisters, when we share the faith and we go out and we meet people, we realize something, our problems ain't really that bad. It ain't really that bad. God has been very good to us. And maybe he's teaching us patience. Maybe he's teaching us something in this time. Beloved brothers and sisters, it's very important that we understand what is going on in our holy church, Beta Christian. This church is a place where it's open to everyone. One of the things after ten zero lays a lot, the deacon says, Ten so One of the things that he does, he opens the curtain to the Mekdes and everyone shares in the glory of God. Jesus Christus came to break down walls, not to build them. And we have to be very careful that we're not building walls. We have to break them down for the benefit of our children. It's very important. We have to show them that example. It's very important because we tend to want to build walls. We got to stop that. We got to break down walls and show them what it really means to be Christian. Because guess what? We're Christians first and then yeah. Everything else is second. Everything else is second. Correct? Yes. A hundred percent. Everything else is second. We're Christians first. When Jesus Christus died on the cross, did he just die for one set of people? No. Huh? He died for the Alam, right? The whole world. Did he just die for the Jamaican people? No. You yeah, see? The Tigrinian people? The Amaran? The Jew? The Greek? Armenian? Catholic? Yep. Hulu. Everyone. Hulu. Everyone. And this is the thing. So if he died for everyone, we have to set that example. And we have to go out and bring the gospel to everyone. And the time is coming when each and every one of us is going to stand before Ixiabir Amlak. He's going to say, what did you do? What did you do about this Moscow? Every year you go to Demera and you dance and you sing and you eat um, barbecue meat. Huh? What did you do? What did you do, beloved brothers? Each and every one of us will be held accountable for what we did. It's very important that we understand the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Medani Alem. So Maskel is a Betam Konjo celebration. It's very good. I see many of you looking very nice in your chemist lips. I see some of you wearing yellow too. Yellow is the color, right? This time of the year, right? Yellow, yes. It's very Betam Konjo, very nice. It's good to see you. Glory be to God. Ixia Bia Yestelin. Amen.